Hello, hosts and hell horses. My name is TV's Guy, and welcome back to the Boss Designs of Bloodborne, where last time we found, and eventually, after much chasing around, managed to destroy Mikolash, the host of the Nightmare, who was quite annoying, but, you know, it's also quite an interesting boss fight. Like, very non-traditional, quite fun in its own weird, strange way. And so now, we have a couple of options for what we want to do. We could always go back and try and kill that weird alien-looking creature that we found. We could also keep exploring in the, uh, what was it called? Margo, Murgo's loft area. Where I think, like, there's, like, another level to the castle and up there we'll find something. But another thing we could also do, and I think at this point I'm probably high enough in stats to handle it, is head back to the DLC and start playing through some of that. Because I do remember last time I was there, like, having gotten past Ludwig <laughs> after many, 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 many failed attempts, that I got my ass handed to me by ordinary enemies on the other side of, uh, of him. Which kind of discouraged me from going further, but I have leveled up a bit since then, and my weapons are more powerful, so maybe... Maybe! Hello. Maybe I can make it a bit, bit further out here without getting, you know, completely insta-killed. So I need Sniper Grandma Grandpa out of the way first. Oh yeah, they have a lot of health. Not enough health, but a lot of it. What's behind door number one? A door. Are you a hunter? Well, that's very odd. Do you hear the toll of the bell? No. The beast you seek will not be found here. Go back to your heart, and if you have the chance, put this knife behind you. Places better left untouched. Secrets better left alone. Only a fool so brazenly wrong. Oh, I am a bit of a fool. Nice hat you got there. But yeah, whatever bell you're ringing, I can't hear that right now. Guess we'll wait to hear a bell and then come back to him? Fist of Gratia. Of Gratia. A chunk of iron fitted with finger holes. The hulking hunter woman, simple Gratia, ever hopeless when handling hunter firearms, preferred to knock the lights out of beasts with this hunk of iron, which incidentally cost a heavy stacker. Gratia was a fearsome hunter, and to her to onlookers, her unrelenting pummeling appeared oddly heroic. No wonder this weapon later assumed her name. So it's a knuckle iron? Oh, well, this is a change of pace. So, you're sitting there praying for something. Uh, you gonna turn really hostile all of a sudden? Oh, is she gonna turn into a beast? Am I gonna eat the pungent blood cocktail? Isn't that the same prayer that she said? She has help, I see. Oh, sh- Okay, can't stack him up. God damn it! I dodged into the tomb. I dodged into the tomb and then I died. But that sounds like the same prayer that Vicar Amelia was offering. Can I? Can I pull you without pulling her? You are extremely annoying. I hate fighting human hunters. Especially ones that have weapons that are just as good as mine. Now. Strategy. Wanna take out the mage. But for that, I do need her to get away from that platform and away from that guy. That'll do the trick. Oh, she finally decided to strike back. 
Hey, you have a gun, you remembered. Hey, got you poisoned. No idea how long that poison's gonna last on him, but hey, it's free damage. No greed. So that guy has the Ludwig's Holy Blade, right? But like, we already dealt with Ludwig, so it can't be him. Okay, that's part one of the problem. Give me that health back. Bye, I think. Yeah, that got him. No, it didn't. Come on. That was a dramatic... Oh, them. She. That sounded like a feminine voice. That was a dramatic finish, and you ruined it for me. Jerk. So, what do we got here? Elevator? Cool. Oh, this is where the eye pendant goes. I grant you eyes. Something about this feels vaguely familiar. Oh, sh I forgot my, uh, I forgot my blood echoes. Hey, can I, uh, is there something underneath here? Oh, sh oh, okay, it's not a monster. Take that. Whatever that is. Lawrence's skull. Skull of Lawrence, first vicar of the healing church. In reality, he became the first cleric beast, and his human skull only exists within the nightmare. The skull is a symbol of Lawrence's past and what he failed to protect. He is destined to seek this skull, but even if he found it, it could never restore his memories. Huh. This, then, would be a shrine to the dear departed saint and his heroic failure. Headless. Of course it's headless. Item waits ahead. Yes, indeed it does. Wait, hang on. Can I write that down? <laughs> Where will this take me? Hopefully it's not like a soft lock or something. It wouldn't be, would it? No. No, no it's not. <laughs> Church cannon. So that would be the same kind of cannon that the giants in the nightmare are carrying, I imagine. An oversized weapon used by the Healing Church, a type of cannon that fires with a curved trajectory and creates an explosion upon impact. Originally designed for use by brawny men with deteriorated brains, not just for any ordinary hunter. But the men lacked the wits to effectively operate firearms and the weapon was quietly ushered into permanent storage. Well, I can't use it anyway, so who cares? Where is this? research hall and clearly enough to remember focus on attacks 
Enough to give me insight just to s by seeing it. Okay. Oh. Nope. Want. Whatever you have, I want it. Bloodstone chunks. That's nice. Okay. Your head looks weird. Has someone, anyone, seen my eyes? I am afraid I dropped them in a puddle. Everything is pale now. Has someone ever. Okay, well, guess I don't need to kill you. Oh, that's poison! More bloodstone chunks. Oh, you! Did that... Did that thing just commit suicide? Are you wearing a jar on your head, or is that... Oh, no. No, that's not a jar. That's, uh... That's something else. Okay. Well, the research seems to have turned out well for you. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. Yo, yeah, okay. So, we're not doing too well, all of us. Hey, I recognize that rune. I've got that on me right now. Communion, yeah. Patient room floor two. This is a hospital? Well. Where the hell did you come from? Yeah, so this is a little rough. This got heavy in a hurry. Oh! Oh, that's not good. And it has a lot of health. And it hits really hard. Uh, I'm in trouble. Uh, 
Okay, can I parry you? Maybe. Doesn't look like it. Oh, Jesus. So the imagery here is one of an insane asylum with violent inmates sort of raging against themselves, going completely mad. <sighs> Which is some loaded f imagery. Just so we're absolutely clear about this, by the way. Mentally ill people are not more likely to be violent. Mentally ill people are universally more likely to be the victims of violence. Like, across all other factors when corrected for, this is always true. But we have this stereotype of, like, people who are crazy, mentally ill, you know, whatever, that they are more prone to violence, that they are more prone to lashing out. And it's not true. Not even a little bit. But w what is true here is that, like, this is modeled after the way that mentally ill people were treated in asylums in the very early days of, of mental health treatment, if it could be called such a thing, where asylums were more like prison labs, where mentally ill people were horribly experimented on. Oh, son of a... And abused terribly and locked up and like and where people who had mental illness would often like even if they weren't violent would turn violent and uncontrollable because they were just abused basically around the clock now what the hell do I do about that guy Okay. I think something just threw jars at me. What the hell was that stagger? Oh. Uh Okay. Jesus Christ. Oh. The shelves explode. They just do that, apparently. Okay. Oh, that's the... That's their heads. That's the... Oh, f hell. Well, this looks like a shortcut of some court kind. seem to have found a lab. Of course the perpetrators here are old, awful men. Again, if you're trying to portray, you know, anything from, like, perspective of a historical reality, yeah, that's accurate. <laughs> really need that shortcut to be active. Oh, 
Oh, it just gets worse and worse, doesn't it? Is that you, Lady Maria? No. You're someone else. Please, could you do something for me? I need brain fluid. Murky, mushy brain fluid. Please, I need... Oh, is that a good idea? Especially? I guess we'll find out. Okay, shortcut, thank god. Let's just... Let's just skedaddle back to the hunter's dream and spend these echoes, shall we? You give the plague mask a bad name. And it's not like it had a great name to begin with. Decorative old hunter garb. Old hunter garb decorated with brass trinkets. At the time, some hunters believed that certain metals would ward off beast blood. On a night of the hunt, it's no wonder the people would assort to superstition. Well, that does look quite fancy. Still. Another peaceful one. Blip, plop, blip, plop. Splish, splash, splish, splash. Blip. Oh, they're cultivating a sunflower. I don't think I want to mess with that. Stairway to nowhere. But yeah, this is a madhouse in the most classical sense of the term. It really is. Okay, I can't sneak up on you, I see. Oh, now, very ungentlemanlike. Ah! Not enough damage, but it'll have to do. Oh my god, go down! What a bastard! What a bastard! So, am I going to have to kill this one to get the brain juice for the other one? Is that how this is going to go? Is that really how this is going to go? Am I going to have to kill the other one, the one that was making a sunflower as well? Well, if given the option, I'd prefer not to. So then how the hell do I get... That looks like the door I need to get to, so how the hell do we get that up there? The levers or something I need to pull? Ugh. Well, let's just climb and see what we can find.
Oh, another one. Ah! Fuck! God damn it! Because, like, really, the only effective strategy I feel like I have against those guys is dancing around them. But you kind of can't do that on the stairs. Oh, sorry. You can't climb ladders, right? Yeah. Okay, into the rafters then. Oh, and Orlando feelings. And Orlando feelings. Okay, birds dropping down from above. Rats coming at me in front. Great. Please don't. Oh, I'm gonna have to be so careful. Mm, relative safety. A door? No? Not a door. Not the place I needed to go. Okay. Oh, I see. Push the lever. Oh, okay. All right. All right. And presumably then that will bring a path up. That... There's a ladder over there. Okay, good. That can bring me to that door. Okay. What a thrill. No, actually, my heart's not in it right now. Oh, hi! It's you again! I hate these things. Oh, it fell off! It fell off. It fell down. Okay. Oh, hell. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Not a pretty sight, is it? The true face of the blood-worshipping, beast-purging, healing church. But that's not all. You seek the secrets held by the nightmare, do you not? Then here's what you must do. Climb the astral clock tower and kill Maria. She hides the real secret. How do you know that? Go on. 
Kill Maria atop the astral clock tower. She hides the real secret. Indeed. Well, pulling the lever seems to have done something. Oh, good grief. But yeah, the true face of the healing church, huh? All right, we climb again. So can I get to the door from here? Yes, okay, good, 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 good. I don't care about the echoes. I can always get more echoes. I don't want to climb around in here anymore. I want to leave. Oh. Living failures, plural. Oh, I see. Oh, sh Oh, God. I guess the sunflower field meant something. Oh, you might want to kill those quicker, I see. Oh god. Oh god. Oh, this is loud. Whatever that is, don't, 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 don't. Okay, well, killed one of them. That's two. I thought I was a magic caster. I don't even know that they have divided by class like that anyway. Okay. So far, so still alive. Okay. Give him the old run around. The old oopsie daisy. The oh my fucking god, don't do that. Right. They can do that. You could have warned me. So, you're okay. You're fine. I, on the other hand, am gonna need to. Oh come on! I 
dodged through that. God damn it. Okay. So I was trying to be very aggressive with the first one and kill it really quickly, but I got caught on some kind of bolt in the hitbox. It has a sweep, it looks like, and I, can, I think I dodged into it instead of dodging through it. Oh, Jesus! Oh! Oh, I got hit-butted and hit by a magic ball at the same time. <laughs> Oh, that was a big smash. Wombo combo. Right, so my first strategy is definitely the better one. Like, they spawn too fast. Like, I can't keep their numbers down. At least not with the damage output that I have. But I don't think they spawn beyond a certain number. So it's probably better to do the slow hit and run. Let's see, do I have anything that might be useful? Oh, yeah, the beast blood pellets. I've never really used those for anything. Whatever they're worth, I might as well get something out of them, right? So I can at most get like a few hits in. Okay, that's a double sweep. Okay, making some small progress. Don't do that again. Okay. Suck it! Suck it! Okay. Okay, gotcha. Fifth times the charm, I think, this one. Ooh, took a little doing. Living failures, huh? Standing in a bed of wilted sunflowers. But with this towering, magnificent mega plant in the middle. Yeah, I think there's some storytelling going on there. <laughs> Just small clue that there might be some storytelling going on there. <laughs> All right. Oh, 
Okay. But here's the thing. Uh, no, not there, not there. Uh, I do hear the ringing of the bell right now. And there's someone who should know about that. Son of a- Oh, of course he does. Of course he has them. Uh, you've gotta be kidding me. That's better. Bear in mind. Some places are better left on top. Only fools do. Bear in some. No? I hear the bell now, though. Okay. Well, hmm. figured maybe that would change something for you, but okay. So I'm pretty sure. That that person in there is the Lady Maria that was talked about, so I think this is the another boss fight. But if it is, then there is so little stage ahead of the fight that I feel like we might as well. Yeah, this looks like a fighting arena. Oh, is that uh, from the... From the cover of the... Like the cover art of the old Hunter's DLC. Oh, you look a little dead. Yeah, a little, little, little drippy overall. Sunflowers on the grave. Not so much a corpse, though. <laughs> Despite what looks like your best efforts. Oh, I know very well how the secrets beckon so sweetly. Only an honest death will kill you now. Liberate you from your wild curiosity. Oh, those swords are cool. Hi! Human hunter foe, huh? Great, that's the one I'm the worst at. <laughs> uh, well, it can't be worse than Ludwig, surely. Right? Right? Oh, maybe a little bit. Okay. Okay, she has the smoke dodge. Oh, ho, ho. didn't expect that, did you? Question is, can I stagger her? Oi, okay. Oh, if that gives you range, fair enough. Ah, no, 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 no! Oh my god, really? Okay. So she ducks under your shots when she does that. But not when she does that! Cool. Damn it. Okay. You don't get much wind up on that dash, which is cool. 
means you have to anticipate. Okay. Um, 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 that's not a good idea. Oh, did that just make your weapon even bigger? Oh, okay. All right. Hell. Right, so I can't outrange her now. I have to actually dodge on time. Yeah, all right. <sighs> Not as tough as Ludwig, I think, but certainly not easy. Unless she has a third phase, of course, in which case. <laughs> oh, okay. Couldn't dodge that that way. I wanted that rally. Oh, shitting hell. She has a third phase. Or at least that's something. Oh, yeah, no, no, that's new. 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 It's definitely new. That's very new. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Okay, that after effect on the burn is like... Bad. Oh, that's a wide sweep. Okay, managed to dodge that somehow. Yeah, there was no... I. If I dodged sideways, I might have had a shot at dodging that, but no. That was a little, um... That was a little intimate. <laughs> oh, you... You are fun! Let's see if I can get that far again. Odds are decent that I can't. I don't know that Beast Blood is going to do me much good here. Because I'm not going to get combos off on her. Oh, come on! There we go. Want to start it off right, you know? So in phase one, she introduces you to her move set. Like, she basically tells you, these are the moves I can do, this is what the wind-up looks like. Okay, I should have probably have seen that coming. Okay. Okay, this is going okay. I say. Ensuring my own destruction. Like, I, I can kind of manage the hit. Oh, I'm out of... <laughs> I am, my friends, completely out of vials.
One more time. Got a rare combo on her there. How did that hit me? Ah, hmm. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That one's fair. Okay. So, a few bullets for parrying in the early. Damn it! Yeah, that's the thing I was trying to do. Okay, no more spending bullets now. I've used my allotment, basically. Right. Absolutely no staggering her out of that. on, I dashed through that. I so did. Big sweep. And then we get away. Okay, phase two successfully implemented. Okay, got a good parry. I keep going too early on that stab. That overhead swing is very much designed to catch you, because like it 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 times out perfectly with your dodge, basically. Okay, good start to phase three. Very good start to phase three. Now, to avoid getting completely cocky and greedy and dying like an idiot. Yes! Oh! Yes! Gotcha. I avoided the greed. <laughs> I did not greed! <sighs> what was that, seven tries? Okay. Celestial Dial. And isn't there a lantern, like, right outside her door? That seems a little excessive. 
Yeah, sorry about that, Maria, but, uh... You had a thing I needed. I guess. A celestial dial that functions with a giant astral clock in the Grand Cathedral. When the dial is held up towards the astral clock, the clock will come to life and reveal a secret to its curious interloper. Stone cairns. No, those are not. St that's not stones. That's shells. children forevermore. Each wretched birth will plunge each child into a lifetime of misery. Pleasant fellow. So those look like Yarnum buildings. Over there... Well, we've seen that before in other parts of the dream. And then the ships. We saw the ships in the Nightmare Frontier as well. Can I have a lantern out here? Ah, yes, there. Fishing Hamlet, huh? That is, uh, that's a big fish. She certainly was guarding something. Okay, number one, how do I get a hold of whatever that weapon that Maria was wielding is? And what kind of stats does it need? I can get her gear. Among the first hunters, all students of Gammon, was the Lady Hunter Maria. This was her hunter's garb, crafted in Canehurst. Huh. Maria is distantly related to the Undead Queen, but had great admiration for German, unaware of his curious mania. Canehurst, huh? Don't see her thing, her double blades, here. Aw. Okay, presumably there's some way to get a hold of them, but I don't know what it is. Uh, okay, let's go do one level up, and then the rest on vials, because we need to keep that vial count up. Somehow changed moments ago, from some place, perhaps deep within. I sensed a liberation from heavy shackles. Not that I would know. How passing strange. <laughs> Good hunter, I very well let. Me accidentally skipped some of her dialogue. That's annoying. I didn't think she'd have some. But I guess defeating Maria 
Wait a minute. Hmm. 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 Anyway, uh, <laughs> that was, uh, the living failures, the failed, the, 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 I forgot what their name was because so, so much happened since I fought them. And also, Lady Maria of the Astral Clock Tower. Quite a bit of a boss fight there. Kind of want to go back and do it again, but that would have to be with a different character, I suppose. Interesting. A guardian of some kind of terrible secret sitting atop, well, all of the evidence <laughs> of the healing church's awfulness. Guarding the secret of some other... Hmm. Some other awfulness, I think. Before we go, we should check and see if Gehrman is around. Doesn't seem to be around today. No? I killed your student. You don't care? No? Okay, fine. Which... All right. But yeah, figuring out something smart to say about those two bosses, because it's going to have to be a double billing. There was no stage between the living experiment, the living failures, and, and Maria. Uh, that's not up to me, fortunately. Not my problem. It's Future Skyn's problem, so I'm just going to throw it over to him. To take it away, Future Skyn. Well, thank you very much, Pat Skyn, and uh, I see you decided to make this a double billing for me. Thanks. But... It makes sense to address the living failures and Lady Maria in one episode because they are intimately connected. To start with, though, I don't usually feel the need to include a content advisory on Bloodborne episodes. It's obviously a horror game. It's called Bloodborne. I don't think anyone watches a Let's Play of this without an expectation of extreme and frightening imagery. But the research lab... Well, I'm not squeamish, but this was the first time that Bloodborne genuinely unnerved me. And the reason why is that this place draws its horror from a very, very real source. Institutional abuse in healthcare is nothing new, and it's nothing old, either. People strapped to beds, forcibly medicated against their will, used as experimental subject without their knowledge, that all still happens. The research lab specifically draws on classic asylum imagery from the very early days of mental health care, where violent abuse was part of the norm, not an exception. Bloodborne is a depiction of that horror, and a very effective one, but the risk that comes with using the abused inmates of this prison as enemies is that someone who's not familiar with the history might have the emotional takeaway that, wow, those violent, mentally ill, crazy monsters sure were scary, instead of Wow, the destructive effects of institutional abuse sure are scary. Hence, we take a second here just to hammer that point home. Anyway, we begin our exploration in a prison, where a terrified man beats his head against the wall repeatedly while chanting a calming mantra, and other cells contain corpses. It's patrolled by a church warden, accompanied by one of the old men we will later see running the laboratory. He's browsing for more victims, I imagine. Then we enter the chapel, and what a change of pace it is. Two rows of sumptuous four-poster beds with medical supplies on the bedside and pious prayer floating on the air. It is a gentle demonstration of the care and comfort the healing church offers to those who seek its help. And then we ride on the altar itself. We rise on the symbols and saints of the church itself to its highest levels. Symbolically, we are ascending to a higher level of the church, a higher level of its ideals. Remember, the hunter's nightmare is a nightmare, so its spaces are connected not by physical proximity, but by emotional and narrative proximity. I don't know that the research lab in real life was found on top of a chapel any more than the chapel would be found on the other side of Ludwig's corpse-strewn blood chamber, but it is symbolically found on a higher level than the chapel. The chapel serves the higher purpose of the laboratory as a source, I think, of victims. 
If I read the storytelling here correctly, the patients in the laboratory were drawn from the chapels of the healing church. People who came in with severe health problems looking for blood ministration and who were perhaps told, oh, we can give you much better care at the laboratory. I wonder if their families eventually came asking after them and it got hard to cover up and that's why the choir eventually decided to use orphans instead. What the Hunter's Nightmare reveals to us is that the Healing Church is a scam, top to bottom. Rank-and-file clerics probably believe that they're trying to help, but the Church as an institution is a means to funnel resources to the laboratory, and the work of the laboratory... Well, the Church is obsessed with the old gods and wants a way to either communicate with them or ascend humanity towards them. The laboratory is attempting to create, essentially, the Celestial Emissary, but they're not there yet, and the best that they've managed to produce so far is the living failures. Somewhat appropriately, the failures look like what they are, failed versions of the Emissary. Same petroleum grey skin, same dumpy body and spindly limbs, but their proportions are off. Their legs are different lengths, giving them an awkward stance, their torsos are squashed, they have no necks, and their heads, rather than being the well-shaped dome of the emissary, are misshapen, collapsed lumps, like those of the patients in the laboratory. They also have six fingers on each hand, where the emissary has six on one and seven on the other. It's a visual way to indicate that the failures are almost there, but not quite. You can almost think of it as a sort of horrible Pokemon evolution line. First stage, the patients that wander the research hall. Second stage, the living failures. And final stage, the emissary. Interestingly, though, the emissary and the failures are both fought in gardens. Lumen wood and lumen flower gardens, respectively. And they both emerge from those gardens almost like plants themselves. And it makes me wonder, are the living failures victims of the laboratory? Or are they grown from victims of the laboratory? In some ways, it doesn't matter which it is either way. The metaphor is the same, I think. To the healing church, people are little more than fertilizer. The living failures are not the boss of the research laboratory, though. Not really. The odd man who's been following us in the nightmare tells us as much for all its horrors, for all its revelations that should be earth-shattering to the faith of the healing church, the living failures are not the big secret. All of this, all of the pain and misery, all of the hurt, all of the abuse, all of that was merely the prelude to whatever it is the Lady Maria is guarding. And this comes through in the level design as well. The entire level is a climb. It's a literal build-up of which the confrontation with Maria represents the climax. Just as the laboratory represents a higher level of the church's history and ideals than the chapel, so too does Maria and her clock tower and whatever she's guarding represent a higher level of the church than the laboratory. We'll deal with Maria's character design a little later first. Another thing that makes Maria the true boss of the area, not the failures, is her presence in the level itself. Throughout the laboratory, we meet inmates desperately calling her name, and most of them are calling for her to save them in some way. There's a sense of familiarity there. These people knew Maria. They must have met her to develop the expectation that she would help them. By the sound of it, Maria must have been kind to them, reassuring. Probably she was the only person in that hellish laboratory who was. And being a famous hunter, of course, she was a defender, sworn to protect the people from beasts and monsters. No wonder, then, that it is her mercy that the inmates cry out for in vain. So, character design. Maria is a human enemy, and so her design has fewer obvious big ideas at play than a monster does, but the subtleties are revealing. First of all, she looks good. And I don't just mean that she's physically beautiful, I mean that she's wearing fashion. A gorgeous embroidered coat over a fine waistcoat over an even more finely embroidered shirt. A double-layered leather cloak, a fine hat, and that beautiful brooch clasped over a multi-layered silk ascot. Maria is serving a look, and that look is tailored. This didn't come off the rack anywhere. 
Now, we know from looking at the item description of her outfit that she's related to the nobles of Canehurst. We know that she comes from money, but you can tell just by looking at her that lady is a title, not a description. And she's not wearing very much gendered fashion either. Maria ultimately reads as feminine to me, I think, but her expression is androgynous. That's going to come up a little bit later. The other thing about her fine fashion, though, is that it is covered in blood. As character design features go, this one is a little on the nose. That fine, pure white silk ascot that sits over her chest is stained with blood. Her purity, her good intentions, are stained by her sins, by the things that she has had to do. It is essentially one step up in subtlety from literally depicting her with blood on her hands. The other thing about her character design is... Maria is the doll, right? Or rather, the doll is Maria. It was based on her. I wouldn't have noticed if the doll didn't have special dialogue that suggests that putting Maria to rest in the nightmare gave the doll a sense of release as well. Again, this is dream logic and things are connected on an emotional level rather than a literal one. Maria was a student of German and German made the doll and there's a couple of mentions of German having like a strange mania or obsession, so... Yeah. But... Where Maria wears androgynous fashion, perhaps with a slight bent towards the masculine, the doll, Germen's version of Maria, wears extremely feminine fashion. Where Maria is active and defiant, the doll is servile and passive. And then there's Germen's line, you can use the doll should it please you, which already sounded wrong the way that he whispers it like a dirty suggestion, but with the knowledge that she was made to look like his student, it sounds... Turbo wrong. So let's put that out of our minds and go back to Maria as a boss of the research laboratory. She says something when we find her. Oh, I know very well how the secrets beckon so sweetly. Only an honest death will kill you now. Liberate you from your wild curiosity. Only an honest death will cure you of your wild curiosity. And she would know, wouldn't she? When we find her, she is dead. And with the blood dripping from her wrist, it's pretty clear how she died. Courtesy of the nightmare, she comes back to life when we approach her, but I don't actually think she's here guarding secrets in service to the church anymore. I think she's guarding us from learning secrets that would only destroy us, or so she thinks. The patients in the research lab call Maria's name. They beg her for mercy. They beg her for salvation. They are begging her to save them. And she didn't. So, here's my read. I think Maria started out as an idealistic hunter, someone who believed in the mission of the early healing church, someone who wanted to be on the front lines, protecting people from the beast plague. But, being a servant of the church, which is corrupt, that purity of purpose cannot last. Maybe she's charged with protecting the research laboratory, maybe her job becomes bringing in patients for study. Whatever the case, she sees what happens at the research laboratory, and no matter how much the church reassures her that the research is for the greater good, well, she is possessed of her own wild curiosity, and I think she goes looking looking for the greater good that the church assures her this is all in service of. And when she finds it, she doesn't like what she sees. What she sees doesn't justify all of this. It doesn't justify what the church has done. It doesn't justify what she has done. They begged her to save them, and she didn't. And she takes her life because she can't live with being a failure. Hey, thank you very much for watching another episode of The Boss Designs of Bloodborne. And dear Mr. YouTube algorithm, please don't demonetize this video. Now, PSA, we are recording more footage for the stream this Saturday at 8 p.m. Central European Standard Time, so tune in if you want to see how the sausage gets made, as it were. 
If you enjoyed this episode, well, I hope you've watched the rest of them. You could also watch the Dark Souls 2 series, which I'm still very proud of, or you could hit the like, comment, and or subscribe buttons on the bell icon and so on, and that'll let you know when the next episode comes out, as well as help me with algorithm stuff, you know. I also have a Patreon, a small merchandise store, and a tip jar. If you'd like to support what I do here, any of those are a good option, although Patreon will get you a bit of early access to videos as well as a couple of other rewards. If you're not in a position to be able to support the channel directly, or hell, if you just don't want to, please don't worry about it. It is more than enough that you've watched the video, and if you want to help out for free, you can share the series with someone who might enjoy it. Anyway, let's get through the self-promotion. If you want to watch the unedited footage that goes into these episodes, that's available on my Let's Play channel, along with Let's Plays of other games like Hollow Knight and Mass Effect 2. If you want to watch some super short videos, I have a shorts channel where I post quick analyses and hot takes. Anyway, thank you for watching. Wear a mask, wash your hands, take whatever vaccines will help end this goddamn pandemic, and try to act in solidarity with those who are worse off than yourself. <laughs> <laughs>